Welcome to the Calvin D Project, where we interview inspiring people who are determined to make a positive change in the lives of the people they serve. Through our conversations, we aim to explore the unique stories and perspectives on making an impact. We hope that by listening to these conversations, you will be encouraged and motivated to take action in your own life. Join us as we dive into stories of people who are driven by faith, passion, and purpose. Right before we dive in, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit that bell notification icon so you can get more episodes like this one. The various Crowder, tell me a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Well, I'm Devarius Crowder, everybody. Nice to meet you all, and uh, thanks, Mr. Calvin, for allowing me to come on. I'm just Devarius Crowder from Tyler, Texas. Originally, I've been residing here in Dallas for three years now. Well, it'll be three years in May. Um, I'm a music head. I'm an administrator at a funeral home. I'm just out here trying things, doing all types of things, so that's who I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Talk about who's inspired you to pursue a ministry in gospel music? I'd say one of the top people, well, I was, it's three in particular, Kim Burrell, the Clark Sisters, and Leandria Johnson. Okay. Those are the top three for me. But with Kim Burrell, I'd say the jazz singing, the the runs, her approach to music, how she she goes for whatever she she feels mm -hmm. in the moment. I think with the Clark Sisters, they, they bring the churchy background while having the jazz, the classical all together and Leandria just gonna give you straight church and straight transparency and truth and everything. Okay. <laughs> so it's inspired me to just, that I don't have to be boxed in. Yeah. Like it's okay to be outside of the box when it comes to music and everything because God has created each of us individually and we all have something special and well, just go for what you know. <laughs> uh, you talked about your song. So talk about your song, You're My God. What's the backstory behind that song? You're My God. I wrote You're My God in 2019. I think I was, I want to say I was in college and I was going through some college issues. I think everybody goes through those issues where you want to give up on college and everything. And at that moment, I was in a weird place, even with church, even with family. And I was like, God, what am I going to do? just praying and even at that time I, I was hearing a lot of songs that was encouraging people and I was like I, maybe I should try something different let me let me just speak directly to God let me say he's the creator he's he's sovereign he's he he's everything literally provider and I was like God I'm just gonna sing back to you I'm not gonna say I'm gonna get this I'm I'm, I'm gonna be in a new house I'm gonna yeah. get a new car all that kind of stuff I literally want to just talk to God that's how I came about and released it in 2020. <laughs> would you say that song or is there another song would you say ministers to you the most? Uh, it's a song, It's So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. It's a hymn mm -hmm. and it's one of my favorite songs because you literally have to trust God, especially in these day, in this 2023 that we're in now. Yeah. It's literally a whole new level and me being 30 years old now and have come through so much, all I have had to do was literally trust in God, <laughs> literally, yeah. even in moments like now, like even this weekend with, with some things that I'm believing God for, I'm like, you literally yeah. just have to trust God, Absolutely. you know, when you don't, you, you don't know what's going to happen. You're living in the unexpected life. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is trust God. In past interviews, um, I spoke with Chosen Be Nice, uh, Jemiah Cannon, and also most recently, Malcolm Christopher. And they both said it was something special about being on that stage in ministry with a sibling. But in your case, you share the stage with the bros. Speak on ministering with the bros. My bros, shout out to Billy Mitchell. He's the engine behind it all. He gave us a call. I think it was August or maybe even the end of July of last year. And he was like, hey, bros, we're going to all get together. Let's do a concert, a night of worship, right? Yeah. So from that night of worship, that was back in September, I think that's when it was. After that happened, everybody was like, oh, so y'all, are y'all gonna make this a thing? Yeah. And so we, we've made it a thing, the bros is actually official and singing with them has been amazing because you have a, a group of guys who individually have their own ministries and we all collectively come together and literally put together 
all that we have. You have Billy Mitchell, you have Aaron Gordon, you have Solomon Manning, you have Jermaine Williams, and you have myself. We all have our own lane. We all have yeah. our own identity. Mm -hmm. We all sound different, but we all come together and we complement each other as well. You don't have many people who complement each other. You're either in competition, you're either mm -hmm. envious, you're either jealous, yeah. but you I, I literally don't feel that. And I've always been the type that said I would never be in a group, okay? But yeah. I, you know, it's something I prayed about. And I was like, Lord, if this is what it's supposed to be, let me be at peace with it. And I was, I've literally been at peace. There's been no contention, it's literally been a peaceful journey and like i said we complement each other and they are some of the singingest <laughs> men in the world i would put yeah. them up against anybody yeah so shout out to my bros i agree that's that's, <laughs> that's refreshing to hear man for real yes sir what new projects are you working on that you can share with us of course i'm working on new music mm -hmm. I'm working on a song now called crazy peace okay. and i'm also working on a i'm writing a book also that's called crazy peace and you know new music i'm trying new things i'm getting a little bit into the acting a little bit you okay. know i'm tr trying trying that out and everything and kind of getting into the fashion thing as well so you know i'm trying things and I, I believe you get to a point now in life where if you don't try anything you won't know what That's you're right. capable of That's right. so and I, I learned this from roy cotton those that are winning are those that have tried things That's right so you don't know unless you try so i'm trying things but yeah so the book and new music are the top things right now i like that i understand that you're also a minister can you speak on your philosophy of daily worship daily worship worship is what to me what god means to you and it, it should be a lifestyle it's not anything you just get up in church on sundays or even wednesdays or if you have church on tuesdays mm -hmm. and you're doing it for one thing to be seen by men our worship is supposed to be private. Well, I can be in my closet right now worshiping. I can be in the restroom worshiping. I mean, it's literally a lifestyle. You're thinking about who God is to you, how, how awesome he is. I'm not asking him for anything, but literally giving back to him, saying that you're literally my God. Mm -hmm. You're God of it, of everything. You're God when I wake up. You're God while I'm at work. You're God while I'm driving. You're God while I'm in the store. You're God when I lay down at night time. So it, it, it's, it's a daily lifestyle. It should be a daily oh, lifestyle. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Caveat, it should be. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. You've been a, a repeat guest on the Soul Therapy Intensive Conference. Can you talk about that conference? Shout out to Marcy Lynn Jackson and Nakia Blakely. Yeah. Soul Therapy, the, we had the first session back in January, I want to say, and that was my first time ever working with Marcy. And for one thing, the power of God fell into place. The women were literally hungry. You get a, a group of women that are hungry and even men that come, but it's mostly women that come. It's a group of hungry women that's literally, you've been, you've gone through the fire, you, you've gone through so much and you're like, you need a place that you can pour out and a place that can pour back into you. And for me, musically, it's been a place where I can pour out to the women. I'm a pretty discerning person, so I kind of know all atmospheres, what I'm going into because I'm normally praying about it. Yeah. I'm like, Lord, what are we supposed to do? And you literally pour out to the people and they're literally getting answers yeah. to problems, answers to what's for them next. If they don't have a problem, you're getting an answer for something next. And soul therapy is literally a soul therapy. It's like a therapy session for the soul. Yeah. <laughs> those who are assigned in the kingdom to do the work of the Lord and also those who don't necessarily have an assignment in the four walls of the church, but it's also for marketplace. It's for family life and everything for authors, entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. philanthropists, all that. It's, it's soul therapy is really something. It, it, it's something that's growing. It's something yeah. that's big, and we just had another session back in April. Okay. And I'm telling you, you you want to lock you want to lock on the soul therapy. It, it's something building. So shout out to Marcy Jackson again. You can go to soultherapyent.com. That's the website, and you can also reach out to Dr. Marcy Lynn Jackson on all social media. And you can I think they have a YouTube channel as well, so you can just type in soul therapy. You recently ministered at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. Can you speak on that experience? It was actually pretty cool. I went there a few weeks ago. I was invited by Friendship West Baptist Church. Shout out to Dr. Frederick Haynes for allowing me to come and be a part. They, they normally have Wednesday night Bible study at the church. They was doing something different. 
taking it out of the four walls of the church and it was at the Black Academy of Arts and Letters. It was absolutely amazing to just be in that place yeah. owned by Dr. King, <laughs> by Dr. Curtis King, yeah. and just to be in that moment to be lifting up the name of Jesus outside of the four walls of the church. It was an amazing experience. It was it was absolutely amazing. I had fun, great band, great singers, great worship, great word yeah. from um, Pastor. So yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Now speak on the tribute to Uncle Kurt Franklin and Maverick City. Wow. <laughs> that day was so Maverick City came here to the uh, Texas region and they were doing the tour a, t- a stop in Fort Worth. Yep. I got a call from Myron Butler about being a part of a choir. And I was like, of course, you know, this is Myron Butler. Who wouldn't want to work with Myron right. Butler? Well, I got that call and he was like, I need a I need a small choir for the Maverick City tour and I'm already like okay Maverick City Maverick City and he was like yeah and so he was like so we're gonna do a tribute to Uncle Kirk Franklin of course I said yes I went there we did the job we we did what we were supposed to do Uncle Kirk was definitely surprised added that whole experience and I've, I've done I've done some um, amazing things God has tremendously blessed me in so many ways but Maverick City was something new because it's it's a fresh movement yeah. and to be a part of that of, of history them going out to Dickie's arena and just lifting up the name of Jesus to see thousands upon thousands of people out there lifting up the name of Jesus was absolutely amazing and to be a part of that to now put that on my resume absolutely. was absolutely amazing so shout out to Uncle Myron Butler for that opportunity Absolutely. Yeah, it was great. Talking about a resume, talk about the Kingdom Image Arts Award for Male Artist of the Year. That was that was definitely a God moment to even be nominated and to actually win. I believe I won, of course, because of the favor of God. Absolutely. You know, and I'm grateful for I'm beyond grateful for the favor of God. And also having a team of people or just people who support you. Because most times we win because people vote for us. Mm -hmm. And so it it, it was indeed an honor to even have gotten as many numbers as I did. And yeah, that was absolutely amazing. I think that was maybe one of the third awards that I've won. But it was just amazing because you get to be a part of of moments, of movements, of what God had. I believe God has his hands on. And to just be the winner of that was absolutely amazing because anybody could have been chosen. Because it's so many, it's so many gifted people out here. So many people who even work harder than some of us, and some of them aren't recognized for what they do. It's definitely an honor to win. (laughs) So shout out to Kingdom Image Awards for the people in the trenches, supporting indie artists with airplays on on radio and attention on social media. Mm -hmm. Talk about having support of people like Carmina Barnett. Later, Wanda Bell, Gerard Bunner. Talk about why those people are so important for you as an independent artist. They are important, Carmina, Wanda, and Gerard in particular, because they're putting your music out there. They're they're introducing you to an audience of people who don't necessarily know you, who've never heard of you, who are like, oh, who is this guy? You know, they hear the name, but to hear the music or they hear the music and don't 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 know the name. And so they're able to put a picture behind what the people are hearing. And radio is important for any artist, even people who write books. You get to come on and do podcasts and everything. And when I first started out, I needed that. And they were literally that Carmina Barnett is a genuine. She is a jewel in the kingdom. Even outside of the church, she is a jewel. Mm -hmm. Anyone, she's been highly recommended by some of your top gospel artists. Some of your top gospel artists have been put on the scene in the in in cars, all that kind of stuff um, on radio because of Carmina Barnett. Even Lady Wonder Bell, she has the indie artist now platform. And in my home city, Tyler, Texas, she came and did a concert and featured me as the artist spotlight and yeah. it was absolutely amazing so shout out to her and gerard bunner he was one of the first persons to ever play my first single make god big that was released in 2015 and yeah. so shout out to gerard from bonner five radio so yeah and it, it, it's very important to have those people backing you up because you always want to have influential people to help you out if you were going to put on a concert of independent gospel artists uh, what five artists or groups would you choose to perform at your concert Ja'Kalen Carr, Crystal Rucker, 
Rich Tolbert, Kalante Gavin. Okay. My brother Ant- Antoine Cooks. All right. And that's just a few to name because there's so many. Absolutely. Videos. Chatney Crystal, Mark Ayers, Cardell Booker. Hey. It's so, it's so it's, many. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> And for my audience that wants to connect with you, how do we find you? I am on social media at Devarius Crowder, D-A-V-A-R-I-U-S Crowder, C-R-O-W-D-E-R. So at Devarius Crowder, that's on YouTube, that's on Instagram, that's on Facebook. The Facebook is official Devarius Crowder. And also, if you would like to book me, you can email bookdevarius at gmail.com. And I'm there. I am there. I'm there. I'm there. And I am sociable, so I do respond back. All right. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I want to thank you for being a guest on the Calvin D Project podcast this week. Be sure to connect with the various crowd on social media and also check out his music. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell notification icon so you can get more episodes like this one. And thank you again for listening to the Calvin D Project. <laughs>